Hey everybody, welcome to episode 28 of SMG Viewers Comments. This is where I take a look at some of your questions and answer the best of my ability. Just like to let everybody know my new release schedule, um, just to tailor things a little more to the people who watch my videos the most, and that would be uh, people on the west coast of the US actually, um, California in particular. I'm gonna start doing a 9 a.m. Pacific release time. So for those of us in the Eastern time zone here in Canada, that's noon. So noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, uh, just because I've been checking my demographics and there are an awful lot of people in California who watch my show and am I ever fucking grateful for you guys. California rocks and boy, do I ever want to move there one day. Uh, I love it every time I visit and I just can't spend enough time there. Anyway, moving on, here's the very first question. Amazing useless cunt you have there. Cool video. Oh, you're referring to Keith Wilkinson in the Dark Class Vintage Deluxe demo. Yeah, Keith's not bad at all. Um, it was a real pleasure to work with him. Hopefully I'm gonna get to do a lot more with Keith in the studio, cause yeah, he's just a fantastic uh, bass player in every regard. Uh, if you wanna check out some of Keith's other work, you can. he used to play in a band called Pomegranate Tiger, and the album was called Entities. You can check it out. Some of the stuff's up on YouTube. I think one of the songs actually got over a million hits. Uh, Keith just totally tears it up on bass, and I wish there were more guys like it, cause it would sure make my job a whole lot easier. I love you, Glenn, but only a Canadian would say that Detroit has great Mexican food. Obviously, you have never been to Texas. Actually, you know, my second biggest fan base is in Texas. And truth be told, yes, I have visited Texas. And actually, the best Mexican food I ever had was at Esparza's in Grapevine back in the late 90s. Uh, if you guys have, have not been to Esparza's, it is absolutely fantastic. They're it's an old converted house. They're lined up out the door. Yeah, it was just a wonderful experience. Amazing food. But yeah, I gotta say, I absolutely love Texas. Dallas is a really cool town to visit. You know, there's a big tech, tech sector there. A lot of great uh, game developers came out. It came out of the Dallas scene. And uh, yeah, just a really, really cool town. I really like Texas a lot. On the whole Mexican food thing, yeah, my wife and I have been going to the same Mexican restaurant in Detroit for like 22, 23 years. It's kind of our thing. And yeah, it's fantastic. I absolutely love uh, Detroit's Mexican food. It's actually quite, Amazing, actually. There's a there's a big uh, Mexican community in Detroit, and they have this area called the Mexican Village, and it's a whole uh, slew of Mexican restaurants, and most of them are just absolutely amazing. And um, yeah, you just can't go wrong with Detroit Mexican food, to be honest with you. Um, and if you're in Anaheim at the convention center, there's actually a, a really cool little hole in the wall mom and pop shop called Mikasa, uh, just uh, just around the corner from the convention center. So if you're at like NAM or VidCon or anything like that, check it out. Always good food. The carne asada is excellent. Definitely worth uh, the block and a half walk or whatever it is to get there, check it out. Anyway, so that's my opinion on Mexican food. You guys got recommendations, let's hear them. Hey man, what's your opinion on the Blackstar Amps? Thanks for the great info and channel contents. My opinion on Blackstar Amps is I would really love to review one on the show. I dropped by their booth. They look pretty interesting. I would love to get one in here and try it out. So if you guys want to see a Blackstar review, uh, please leave some comments below and I can screenshot those and send those uh, to the guys at Blackstar Amps because I did get their contact info when I was at NAMM. And like I said, would love to review one. So just chime in and let them know there's some demand there. Sometimes I like to watch your videos for nothing more than to see that distressor inaudibly slamming the shit out of your vocals in the background. Rock on. Oh yeah, the Empirical Labs Distressor, this guy right here. I bought that in, uh, what? I think I bought that the day after Christmas in 2003, and it's been my rack ever since. It just sits there and works. I love the Distressor because it's really hard to fuck it up. You know, you can just set it up and it's gonna sound great no matter what you do. It just sits there, does a great job, stays the fuck out of the way, and doesn't get nasty unless you really push it. So um, I, if you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. Uh, I had a chance to actually meet the guys from Empirical Labs when I was at NAMM. Cool bunch of dudes. Hopefully we're gonna, I'm gonna get to do some more demos. I know I wanna check out the Fatso and maybe a little free queue, that kind of thing. And uh, just see what else that they've got to offer because I think some reviews on that stuff would be really cool. But yes, if you're saving up and you're wondering what compressor to get, yeah, get a distressor. You just can't go wrong. They just sound magnificent. What do you think of Floyd Rose Tremolo on guitar? I think a Floyd Rose is awesome once you get it set up. Setting one up, on the other hand, is something completely different. They're a bit of a pain in the ass. But uh, once they're set up, they're, they're a lot of fun. And um, actually, one of the most fun things in the world is a guitar not only equipped with a Floyd Rose, but with a uh, sustainer pickup. 
I had a kid bring one and you, you could just do the most insane dive bombs that would just go on forever and ever and ever. You know those amazing uh, dive bombs at the end of cemetery gates, you know, with the uh, sustainer pickup, those are very easy to do. Without, not so much, I've never really been able to nail those, but uh, with a sustainer, yeah, you can just make those go on forever. So yeah, Floyd, coupled with a sustainer, I wish more guitars would offer that. And uh, if anybody knows any guitar manufacturers that are still building those, uh, let me know. Did you get to try the bias head? No, I did not get to try the bias head, and that was a bit of a drag because I really wanted to check it out. I thought Positive Grid was going to be at NAMM, but only the bias head made it, and it was tucked in at the back of the Strandberg booth. Um, I'm probably going to get a chance to do a review on a Strandberg this year. I got to meet Ola Strandberg very briefly, but uh, the rest of the guys working for his company, um, they were all happy, very happy to meet me, and they seemed like a bunch of really cool dudes. I'd love to do a review on one of those. I got to play Trey Xavier's, um, you know, Trey from Gear Gods. I got to play one of his Strandbergs. And very interesting. That taper on the back of the neck is really something different, and I'd love to see how it, see how it uh, works in a day-to-day -day studio environment. So hopefully we're going to get to see a review on that very soon. But meanwhile, the bias head, yeah, I really want to do a review on that as well. Hopefully we can make that happen. Okay, guys, that's it for this episode. Please keep those comments and questions coming. And if you want me to check out Blackstar amps, please leave a comment below and I can screenshot that and send it to Blackstar because the more interest they have in their product, they're definitely going to want to send, send something and we can make that review happen. And I can give you guys the honest truth about what's happening because that's how I review stuff. Anyway, until next time.